Vegans say that plant-based eating is the most healthful and to try to prove this, they will sometimes provide their blood test results. But do they really have much to brag about? Or are they, as usual, cherry picking and misrepresenting the data? Let's take a look. What's up everyone? How's everybody doing? Vegan blood tests, huh? <laughs> I'm thinking I want to make this into a series because I'm seeing a lot of really poor blood panels from all these deluded vegans out there. Who's with me? If you think that's a good idea, this video series, drop me a comment and subscribe for exactly this kind of content. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the lipid panels from one plant-based athlete's three blood tests. We're going to call them PBA from now on. I'm going to analyze all three of those tests together, keeping an eye out for trend. And ultimately, we're going to draw some conclusions. Like, is the plant-based diet healthful for PBA as he says it is? Did being vegan decrease his chances of a heart attack as he seems to think it has? Let's find out. His first blood test was done on February 7th, 2012. Yeah, I know, a while ago. His total cholesterol came back at 131. Look, total cholesterol is generally not a good market for heart disease or anything really, so we're just gonna ignore it. His triglycerides came back at 82. And they're a good marker, I suppose, but his triglycerides never really went wild on any of the tests, so we're gonna ignore those as well. Now, HDL is a marker you do want to consider. His was 47 this time around, which is decent, but nothing to brag about, bro. His LDL of 68 was very low, which puts him at a higher risk for all-cause mortality, at least according to some studies. But LDL is controversial as a marker for heart disease or anything really, so I won't be looking at it much. His remnant cholesterol, however, what? Was at 16, which put him at a medium to low risk for heart disease. Now science tells us that remnant cholesterol is most likely the best single marker for heart disease and you want to see it as close to zero as possible. Since both remnant cholesterol and HDL are good heart disease predictors, the remnant cholesterol to HDL ratio should be of value here. On this first test it was 0.34 which put him at a medium risk for heart disease. But PBA was blissfully and ignorantly happy with these results, thinking his cholesterol was perfect, when it was really just kind of average. Let's take a look at the test number 2 from December 12, 2012, where his HDL dropped 5 whole points down to 42. Hmm. His remnant cholesterol rose to 26, which put him at a medium risk for heart disease, and his remnant cholesterol to HDL ratio came back at 0.62, which put him at a medium to high risk for heart disease. Damn, bro. These are significantly worse. Plant-based, though. Okay. Test number three came on July 3rd, 2014, and his HDL dropped two more points down to 40. His remnant cholesterol came back at 20, which put him at a medium to low risk for heart disease. But since his HDL kept dropping, the remnant cholesterol to HDL ratio came back at 0.5, which put him at a medium to high risk for heart disease. You gotta get that HDL up, bro. All right, meta-analysis. So, over the two and a half years of PBA getting tested, his total cholesterol went up ever so slightly, but it's nothing to worry about and it's not a very good marker individually anyway. So nothing to see there. His triglycerides went up slightly, but that's no real reason to panic in this context either. 
His HDL, however, which is the so-called good cholesterol, kept progressively dropping, and that's not good. It's still in the green, technically, but this downward trend is alarming. One more point drop will put him at a high risk of heart disease. And you have to question the validity of these clear-cut cutoff points and consider the downward trend as more important, in my opinion. What about his remnant cholesterol? It started at 16, which is decent, and ended up at 20, which even though it's still in the same medium to low risk group as 16, it is worse. And again, there seems to be a worrying trend developing here. Consequently, his remnant cholesterol to HDL ratio rose by almost 50%, going from medium risk to medium high risk of heart disease. Not only is PBA not heart attack proof, as he seems to believe he is, his chances of getting heart disease are actually average and have gotten worse on his vegan diet. Before I draw my final conclusion, have you subscribed yet? Tell me why not in the comments, douchebag. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Look guys, cholesterol is very dynamic, it fluctuates a lot. These numbers could change from day to day. And cholesterol levels are not the only markers for heart disease and there could be factors other than diet at play here. Still, these are the heart disease markers we got and if PBA is going to consider them very credible, he can't be mad if I consider them credible as well, can he? This is what we got to work with basically, so work with it we will. And guess what, PBA? If your plant-based diet is responsible for your cholesterol results, as you claim it to be, your high-carb, low-fat, plant-based dietary approach seems to have steadily worsened your lipid panel heart disease markers over the years, which makes me want to ask the following. How come you haven't released any lipid tests in the last four and a half years, bruh? Not feeling so great, are we? Don't worry. We understand. This one hit the heart, though it was meant, meant for the brain. I guess I'm the one to blame with my fucked up aim. You got struck out in the game by default when we released this jewel from the CV vault. With this shackle by your wrist, with concrete for feet at the bottom of the abyss.